I was going to avoid this whole Cheryl Swoops thing, but I think there's enough there to talk about it now following L. Duncan's apology to Swoops for sharing inaccurate information, um, apology that I think was deserved in this case. And I think this latest instance of Cheryl Swoops versus Caitlin Clark is a little silly and much ado about nothing. Look, um, was Cheryl wrong in saying that the fever would make the playoffs without Caitlin Clark? Yes, clearly. Um, is you know it arguable which team is better w- without their respective rookie, the the sky or the the fever? You know, people have given rookie of the year takes and been wrong all year. Caitlin Clark's going to be the rookie of the year, but Angel Reese has had a terrific year. I'm not going to lose my mind over the latest. The, the problem here is Cheryl does have a history of, I think it's fair to say, hating on Caitlin Clark um, with, with her comments, what she said. I mean, because some of what she said has been inaccurate. So let, let's let's go through the timeline for a second in order to properly digest this. You know, Cheryl Swoops had um, in the past talked about Caitlin Clark and and said she was breaking the record in more games than Kelsey Plum. This was with Gilbert Arenas. This isn't just for Caitlin, but you asked me about Caitlin. If you're going to break a record, to me, if it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player set it. Okay. In, right? So if, if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm-hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, then there's another year. You know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year wrong to break that record. So is it truly a broken record? I, I don't you, know. You think, you think exactly how I... I don't I think, think so, but yeah, that'll go in the record books as Caitlin Clark is the all-time, whatever it is. I don't even know what the number is, but that's the way it'll be. She went on to say Caitlin shoots the ball 40 times a game, which also isn't true. So you can't just be wrong. Like, it's not okay to just be wrong. And Cheryl Swoops, you know, that's not the only time she's talked about Caitlin Clark in a way that, like, came across almost adversarially, right? Um, and strangely. And, and people have, have, have said, you know, because she's a legend, you shouldn't criticize her. That's not true either. You know, like, what you say, you open yourself up to criticism for. But what you should not be criticized for is something you did not say, Right? And when the um the latest of this spread everywhere, I saw the Katie Lou Samuelson thing. And I was like, she really said that? Like she said that that Katie Lou Samuelson is more valuable to the Indiana fever than Caitlin Clark is? Like that is a wild thing to say. So I went and looked it up. I went and looked it up. And the problem is. She didn't say that, right? Like, she didn't say that. I mean, you have what she actually did say. Here is a clip from the Queens of the Court podcast with with Cheryl Swoops. I don't know if Chicago is in the playoffs right now without Angel. Right? Yeah. Is Indiana, excuse me, is Indiana in the playoffs right now without Caitlin? Mm, I don't know. Last well, year, no, no. Well, but but they 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 were close, right? But when you look at the overall team, like the pieces that they have, without without question, Indiana has better players than Chicago, from top to bottom. Look, Indiana has a couple other all stars. I mean, those comments just didn't upset me that much. Whatever. It is what it is. I get it. The history. And, and I've seen Caitlin Clark fans try to bring up Cheryl Swoop's history. I'm not talking about her coaching history in Loyola either. I don't need to bring up her past to attack her. Like, it's not relevant to this current conversation. I will address the substance of her comments. Right? I will address the, the substance of her comments. And I tweeted this at the time. This is not me, like, you know, armchair quarterbacking it. After I was looking for the, the Katie Lou thing, I tweeted this. I didn't hear Swoop say that Katie Lou thing. She's deaf said some questionable things about CC, but that detail shouldn't be spread unless I missed it. Because we shouldn't just spread false information. Because you want it to be true. 
or whatever the case may be. Now, L. Duncan, ESPN analyst, um, went out there and, and criticized uh, Cheryl Swoops. Here is, is some of what Duncan had to say. Dominating. Now, someone did take a loss in the basketball world this week, though, and I love her, but she's wrong here. Cheryl Swoops, former WNBA player. We all know that. Current host of Queen of the Court podcast. She had some thoughts. She's had some thoughts previously about Caitlin. She would later have to apologize of those thoughts being uninformed, taking she shoots like 60 shots a game, just being a little bit inflammatory and critical without any actual analysis. And she apologized for that during uh, the women's college season. And she's now stepped in it again by saying that Indiana is in the playoffs right now without Caitlin Clark. By saying that, like, Katie Le Lou Samuelson's really more integral in terms of her two-way ability than Caitlin. And all that was the part that got L not in trouble, but led to, you know, where we're at right now. Because what L Duncan said before that is correct. You know, Cheryl has been hating on Caitlin. And it's okay to point that out. I don't care what she did in her career. It's true. She's hated on Caitlin Clark. Um, and you get called out for things you say. It's okay. But you shouldn't be called out for things you don't say or you didn't say. So Cheryl Swoops responded online. L. Duncan, really? Please show me where I said Katie Lou was more valuable than Caitlin on my podcast. Didn't happen, which is true. It didn't happen. I looked for that very, you know, closely and, and listened for that very closely. So L. Duncan issued an apology about misquoting or just sharing inaccurate things. Uh, I did the thing you aren't supposed to do. I reacted to Cheryl Swoop's comments about Caitlin Clark based on quotes pulled for me by producers in the rundown. I should have listened to the show. The same thing I implored CC fans to do when they were attacking me a couple months back for hating on her. I hate that I've sent more vitriol in her direction and I'm taking a big L. I've texted Cheryl the same thing. I will do better. I'm sorry. That's what a grown, mature person does. It doesn't mean the rest of what she said doesn't hold weight. I didn't see her take back anything else she said, but Cheryl Swoops didn't say that. So that shouldn't be spread. You know, again, I think um, Cheryl has almost been odd in the way she's talked about Caitlin Clark. Um, and I don't think it helps her legacy overall, but media literacy is important. I mean, we've seen it with this boxing thing in the Olympics. Like, people just spread something without actually looking into it. And, and you know, their agenda is what matters and not the actual truth of the matter. Like, some topics like that one require nuance. You know, they require actual care. And it seems like people don't actually care what they're spouting as long as, you know, it feeds into their confirmation bias, if you will. This is much less serious and much more trivial than that. But whoever it is, we got to be accurate when we're talking about them.